Hey, good morning. It is Friday the 6th of November, and we still are battling over the uh, election. And it's all in God's hands, really. Um, some are saying a lot of corruption, a lot of odd things. Yep, yep, could be. But in any fashion, life goes on, and we're going to go on. So I wanted to share with you a story that uh, when I was in the sixth grade. When I was in the sixth grade, I had a friend who was actually a year older. He was in the seventh grade, but we were in a small school. And so our teacher, he would, um, he loved baseball and he was a Boston Red Sox fan. And what happened was that he liked to take us out. We would have our own World Series of baseball. We even made our own bases out of wood because we couldn't afford them and, and had our bats and our mitts and, and our hats. Oh, we were all serious about it. Our teacher was marvelous because he would take and use uh, our stats of uh, where we would get and how we would get. We would record every hit and strike and everything. It was amazing what he would do. Of course, he was teaching us math at the same time, but we didn't think of that. We thought, well, this is, we're keeping our baseball stats. But in any fashion, um, there was a friend, a really nice, wonderful young man who had a, um, an, his left arm was withered. And um, so it, it was, he it was crippled with it. And so he would come out and play baseball. Well, he played second base. And he couldn't use his left arm at all. It was it was useless. And so we, I was kind of curious to watch him. Well, what? How could he be playing second base and have that kind of a problem? Well, when the ball would come to him, he would catch it with his right hand in his glove, and he was so quick in taking and tucking it under his his glove under his arm, grabbing the ball and throwing it. It was it was so fast that and so accurate that. We liked to have him play. And when he would get up to hit, he would hit with one arm, not with the, and he could really hit that ball. Somewhat like a person would hit a tennis ball. And so through the years, I was kind of wondered, what a nice guy. One time we were out cutting wood with he and his family and, and um, we were doing something to take home for firewood. And he was out there wielding an ax and doing everything. And I was just amazed at, at what we thought, you know, would be a handicap. But for him, no, he went on. But it reminded me of the story, of the story in the Bible that we find in Mark chapter three. It's in the other gospels as well, but succinctly, Jesus was out and he was on his way and he was going on his way up to the synagogue, which was like one of our local churches. And there was a man there with a withered hand or a shriveled hand, depending on which version were there. And some of the people were really watching Jesus to see what he would do because it was the Sabbath day. It was the Sabbath day. So they were watching closely to see what he would do. And as the man came up to him, that um, he saw them, and Jesus knew that they were watching to see what he would because they knew Jesus could heal people. Well, they were watching to see if Jesus would heal him on the Sabbath day, which, you know, they would consider that work. And so Jesus came up and told the man to stand up now in the, in the synagogue. Now everybody's watching and seeing this man. Was this an emergency? No, it wasn't an emergency. And so here he is, and Jesus' man stood up, and then he turns and he looks at the people. And I wanted to read this just exactly as it is in the Bible. He turned to the people and he said, which is lawful to do on the Sabbath? What is okay to do on the Sabbath day? What is right? To do good or to do evil? To save a life or to kill? Well, they remained silent because, well, of course they would say, well, do good. And they, they were baffled by his question and didn't know what to say. And so Jesus looked around at them, and the Bible says he got angry with them and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, the Bible says. He said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and as his hand, as he stretched it out, it was completely restored. 
The man took the step of faith to obey Christ, and when he stuck his hand out, he was healed. It was a step of faith. Well, the Bible tells us that then the Pharisees went about and began to plot with how they might kill Jesus. Can you believe that? For the good that had happened. Well, Eric never got his arm uh, restored like this man did, but he will when Jesus comes. And I know Eric loves Jesus, even though I haven't seen him in a long time. He was a wonderful Christian young boy. And I'm delighted that no matter what infirmity we may have, the Lord finds it a delight to heal us. And when he comes, we will all be restored, all like he wants. What a delightful promise to have. Dear Lord, I thank you for this wonderful story. I thank you that we could be and see this story in our minds and that we can be in that very room and feel the healing faith and power of your, of your words. You, the great creator, to heal this withered hand was nothing. But you were more interested in the hearts that were around, weren't you? And Lord, may we not be stubborn. May we come to you and recognize you as our Lord and Savior and to lead us today. I thank you for that. Be with us, Lord, today. Be with our country. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're having our services tomorrow at 11 a.m. Please come join us. We'd love to have you at naplessdachurch.org. That's our website. Or we could have it at the, uh, you might be on Facebook later in the day. It takes a little time for it to get onto Facebook. But anyway, we're glad that you could be with us. May God bless you and have a great weekend, all right?